Hello everybody, uh, my name is Peter de Frenne and I'm a professor at the Faculty of Bioscience Engineering. Uh, and I will talk about microclimates in forests uh, today. And this is probably one of the most influential uh, graphs uh, in, in science of the 20th and 21st century, uh, the proof that climate warming is happening across the globe. But what many people do not realize is that this, these measurements are based on weather station data, as you can see here on the left, um, where um, the, uh, micro the macroclimate is measured in open habitats uh, that are installed well away from trees. And if you work in forests, of course, such conditions do not reflect the temperature inside forests below tree canopies. And the, the conditions on the right are very different from the conditions on the left. Uh, and this is important because uh, a majority of the uh, terrestrial biodiversity lives in the shade of trees in forests. Uh, these uh, processes drive uh, carbon and nutrient cycling. And so uh, yeah, microclimates are obviously nothing new. They have been studied since uh, the beginning of the 20th century. Uh, for instance, these books by Gregor Kraus and Rudolf Geiger were uh, produced or written in the 1910s, 1920s. But microclimates are uh, uh, receiving a lot of attention today again uh, because of climate change and because they can buffer climate change impacts. And the way that we quantify climate change impacts uh, is via uh, the uh, microclimate offset. So the offset in a forest is the instantaneous temperature difference inside the forest minus the outside temperature. Uh, and this can be quantified in a paired design where we measure temperatures on the left in the weather station and temperatures on the right within a forest. We recently quantified all these differences across the globe using a global meta-analysis. Um, and we found that uh, across these 700 uh, sites across the globe, maximum temperatures on our, are on average four uh, degrees cooler inside forest. So on the x-axis, we plotted here the temperature difference inside the forest minus outside. And so on average, maximum temperatures are four degrees cooler. Mean temperatures are on average 1.7 degrees cooler, but minimum temperatures, so the winter temperatures and nighttime temperatures are on average one degree warmer inside the forest. So the temperature uh, variation is buffered within forests, lower maximum temperatures, higher minimum temperatures. But of course, this offset uh, strongly depends on uh, two factors. First of all, the forest structure and the composition. And secondly, also the macroclimate, uh, the temperature outside the forest. So first, the first factor, forest structure, uh, to quantify influences of different structural metrics of a forest, uh, we installed sensors across uh, temperate European forests from Sweden to uh, Switzerland and from the UK to Poland. Uh, and in each of these forests, uh, we installed loggers that measured the microclimate for uh, more than one year. And we then related this to uh, structural metrics. So the most important ones are displayed here. Uh, on the y-axis, again, this offset. Negative values mean cooler values of the maximum temperature in the summer. Uh, in this case, and we see that if the canopy cover is higher, so if trees and shrubs cover a larger proportion of the ground, that this uh, offset becomes more negative. Uh, also, the ne negative relationship with the basal area, if there are more thicker uh, stems in the forest, the offset becomes more negative. And if there are uh, for, uh, trees that cast more shade, the offset also becomes more negative. And then finally, the offset, the second factor, also depends on the macroclimate. And so the uh, temperature outside the forest, and again separated into maximum mean and minimum temperatures, the offset becomes more negative when the outside maximum temperatures is very hot. And when it increases, this offset becomes more negative. Secondly, it becomes more positive when the outside temperature increases, or when the outside temperature is uh, colder, I should say. So it becomes more 
warm inside the forest when it's very cold outside. So this means that forest floors have not necessarily experienced climate warming. And the, undisputably, there has been warming of the macroclimate, but at the forest floor, depending on changes in the forest structure, there might have been co even cooling of the microclimate if the forest has become more dense over time. And this is the case in quite a lot of uh, temperate European forests. So the question is, what is now the effect on uh, species and uh, ecosystem processes like carbon cycling that take place below the trees? So, and the answer is that it depends on the forest structure. Now, imagine if you have two forests, uh, one forest at time one, uh, where uh, the, the canopy is quite dense. Uh, the temperature outside at that time was 22. In the summer, there is a particular amount of offsetting, 2 degrees, and the forest floor temperature was 20 degrees at that time. Several decades later, uh, a few trees were cut. The macroclimate has warmed by 2 degrees, so it's 24 in the summer at that time, uh, maximum temperatures. But a few trees were cut, so the, the, the offsetting, the amount of cooling by the trees is reduced. The microclimate here in this example is then 23 degrees. So the microclimate warming was more than the macroclimate with an A warming. And also the opposite is possible. If there are more trees, uh, uh, the forest canopy can uh, densify. That's also possible. So how has this then influenced forest biodiversity? And we uh, compiled for, to answer this question a database of more than 3,000 plots that were surveyed twice within, with an interval of uh, 30, 40 years, spread across Europe again. And we quantified the thermophilization here on the y-axis. So that is an index that quantifies how much plants are growing there that uh, love warmed, that are warm adapted. So if this is positive, this means that there is an increasing dominance of warm loving species. We see that if we relate this to the actual observed change in the macroclimate, so the, the, as measured in weather stations, we don't see a trend. It's not that in regions where the climate has warmed more, that there, are, there is more thermophilization. But if we take into account the changes in the trees, the changes in the canopy cover, that's the microclimate, so that is the temperature at the forest floor corrected for changes in canopy cover, then we do see a strong relationship. Uh, and we see very strong thermophilization when the mac microclimate has warmed a lot. So when the, the, there were a few trees cut down and, and there was a gap uh, and there was more microclimate warming than macroclimate warming, as in the previous example. And we see even negative thermophilization or increasing dominance of cold adapted species even uh, in the case where microclimate has cooled. Good, so far I talked especially about forest interiors, uh, but a lot of the global forest cover is actually situated not far away from the edge. Uh, on average, 20% of the global forest cover is less than 100 meters from the edge, and in Eur Europe the situation is even uh, worse. Uh, in European broadleaf forests, 4% uh, of all forest cover is less than 4.5 meters away from an edge. So this means that across Europe, there is not less than 9 million kilometers of edge. And these uh, edge effects influence also the microclimate, of course. Uh, uh, we, in, in a, an ERC project uh, that we are co coordinating, we measured the microclimate uh, from, a, from the edge to the core along a gradient uh, of 100 meter, as you can see here on the x-axis, we again measured the offset in the summer using microclimate loggers in dense, intermediate and open forests. And what you can see in all these forests is that the edge plots are always warmer. So that's unsurprising, of course. But what was interesting in this uh, study is that there is an interaction with the macroclimate. So in warm regions, in, in Italy in this case, in southern Europe, um, the edge is 
more or less the same as the interior. So the difference between action interior is quite low. Whereas in cold regions in Norway and Scandinavia and Northern Europe, the difference between the edge and the core is much bigger. So there is an interactive effect between the macroclimate temperature and uh, the distance to the edge. And these edge microclimates, they affect biodiversity and also ecosystem functions. And so first of all, we see quite uh, more plant species, a higher species richness at the edge in these plots. So again, the distance to the edge, here species richness on the y-axis. So there are more, there is a higher species richness at the edge. That is, on the other hand, of lower phylogenetic diversity. That's an index that quantifies to what families that these plants belong. So if this is lower, this means that at the edge, there is a less variation in families and less variation in the uh, phylogeny to which these plants belong. Uh, so there are more, for instance, uh, less ferns and more grasses, more asteraceae at the edge. And edge effects also uh, persist on carbon stocks. So in exactly the same plots uh, in the Formica project, we then quantified carbon stocks in the above ground uh, compartment in the trees, in the forest floor, so in the litter, uh, in the leaves on the forest floor, and in the mineral soil. And we see that, uh, especially in the mineral soil and in the above ground compartment, there is more carbon closer to the edge. And so again, the same 100 meter transect here. So if we sum this up to the total carbon here in the top left panel, we see that there is on average 40% more carbon at the edge, stored at, at the edge. Um, if you extrapolate to the, to, to the whole of Europe, this is not less than 180 teragram of carbon or an extra 1 million hectare of forest, uh, the equivalent of, of the carbon in 1 million hectare of extra forest or one third the size of Belgium that is stored in these edges but that is not uh, often accounted for. And if we then uh, predict how these forest microclimates will change into the future, we get a picture like this. Uh, so based on the global database that I started my presentation with, um, we get these maps. So the maximum temperature offset in forests across the globe. We can then calculate how this will change into the future based on climate change scenarios, so based on how the macroclimate will change. And if we then take the difference between these two maps, we get the, the difference in the temperature inside forests now and into the future. And we see that this will, this will actually decrease. <clears throat> so forests will become cooler uh, by the end of this century compared to now, or the offset at least, the difference between the temperature in a forest and outside, that difference will become more negative, so because of changes in uh, macroclimate. So it's important to mention that in this model we did not assume uh, forest changes uh, in terms of composition and structure, and also not in terms of water availability and uh, evapotranspiration. Good, to end this uh, presentation, um, forest microclimates are buffered across the globe. Um, it's important to incorporate this uh, into predictions of biodiversity and ecosystem functions and services. Uh, these, these microclimates are really key to improve uh, adaptation to climate change, to assist uh, management decisions, and these edge effects uh, cannot uh, be neglected. So uh, at the Forest and Nature Lab, we focus a lot of our research on climate change. The methods that we use for this is uh, experimental warming in the field. Uh, microclimate is a big uh, research topic of our lab. How, why and when to quantify this. And also we use a lot of climate gradients uh, from north to south Europe, from low to high elevation, urban uh, gradients and so on. And so the methods are observational, experimental. Uh, we compile large databases and also do uh, modeling work. Thank you very much for your attention.